the Adventure Channel is back. Welcome to the Cowpens National Battlefield. Visitor Center with the obelisk. Here's our visitor center and the beautiful monument. We'll show you guys. And here's your American forces on the other side. Pretty cool. Major MacArthur. Wonder if he was any kin to General MacArthur and his daddy, General MacArthur. I don't know. You know, MacArthur, the original fought in the Civil War. Wasn't he a Medal of Honor winner? Mm -hmm. Yeah. His daddy fought in the Civil War, yeah. The Visitor Center. There's the order of battle. We will see that. And we will go back into the uh, museum now. These are the Scots and the British. The Dragoon uniform here that was worn by Tarleton's troops. These are the 71st Scots. a little description right here. Fusiliers. Here's John Howard commanding the main battle line. He was also the governor of Maryland. Look at that. This is the Pickens Sword. They promoted him to Brigadier General in the state of South Carolina. And there's a haversack up here also. Look at this. Cool. And over here. Is this a grasshopper? This is a grasshopper. Yeah. Three pounder? Yeah. What do you got over there? That's right here. That's the first thing you rammed in there. It got unexploded powder out. Yep. Then you got the sponge here to run in there second to make sure it's still in there. And then that's which what you ram everything else with. Mm -hmm. This is to clean out your priming. And that is your lighter. Here's a sharpshooter's rifle. And the Charvel musket, which was found on the battlefield, by the way. There's a pike, a, is it an officer's sword? It's an American horseman's saber is what that's called. Look at that. And these are actual musket balls. These were taken off the battlefield. We are going right out there. The battlefield is in the distance. We are on the historic Green River Road, which comes all the way back through there and comes all the way right down the middle of the battlefield. And it does take you to where we did our other video at Kings Mountain, same road. How about that? Let's go walk this field. So our first marker has Daniel Morgan choosing the ground. Here's what you're looking at. There's a slope left ravine. And then here's the order from General Nathaniel Green. And now we're gonna look out that way where it all started. Five feet, five inches. They weren't very big, were they? So here's where we're standing, right here. And you're gonna look up as we start to kind of, you guys that know your golf, it's kind of kind of dog leg left on you right through there. So the continental line came right through here. And then over here, Virginia, Carolina, Delaware, Maryland, all that, and then all the way back through here. And there you go. 
cool now right here. This is the American second line of defense. 17 years old, Thomas Young wrote this. Right out through here. We're now on the skirmish line at the very beginning. They have a little silhouette of a guy right over there. That's pretty cool. As you hear dogs barking, some jackasses brought their dogs out here and they're barking. But here's your skirmish line. And these sharpshooters were ordered to take aim and fire within range with Tarleton's troops. And they drop two thirds of the officers and then they funnel back through the continental line, which was back there. If you see the big little bitty park bench back there, that's where the next line was and they would fall back. So your guys back here would probably think they were retreating. They would try to move in on them. And of course this was flat grass in those days. This has really grown up in the last seven years since I've been here. They haven't mowed it, but this used to be just plain grass. It probably was on that day also. National battlefield. Yeah, hey, don't you bow up at me. Oh, he's angry. Don't you bow up at look me. At that. Oh, look at that tone. You bow up at me. You should have your fishmonkeygloves.com on and you'd be okay. Well, I gotta, I don't wanna hurt him. Yeah, he knew you were, yeah, okay, there you go. Don't you hurt me. What do we got there? This is a, uh, oh, he's pretty. No, we got a king snake. See his markings? Yeah, it's a king. This is an eastern king snake. He's black. Open up for us. There Sorry, you go. Sorry, big guy. Don't there mess you go. with us. Open yeah, up he, for us. He's a little angry. He's all right now. Oh, he's musking a little bit. He's pr how, how much is he? Three and a half feet? Yeah. Yeah, he's musking a little bit. On, yeah. Come on, big guy. No, you ain't biting nobody. You can't hurt nobody. That's he's cool. on your arm. That's kind of cool now. <laughs> he's going to... He knows we're still here. He's not going to run off just yet. That's a good specimen. He's about six foot. No. You don't think? No. No, well, he's five. Yeah. He's a good specimen, though. He had good constricting. He had some power, so he's pretty good. How many rats you killed today, buddy? He's probably going after some more. He's going, if he goes right over there, I mean, look at that. Yeah. That's just prime hunting ground for him right there. That is a rat killing machine. See you later, big man. Goodbye. Okay, we are another hundred yards down the way. And here you guys can see. Green River Road is still here. And this was when Colonel William Washington got into a sword fight. His young servant, according to legend, rode up just in time, saving his life by shooting the attacking British officer. That is supposed to have happened right here in this area. And the Scruggs house is that way. There's trailhead parking. If you want to keep going that way, we're going to turn back on the road. And now we're looking back the way we came and where we captured the king snake. <laughs> Okay, now we've arrived, as you see right here on the map. It says you are here. And we're looking back the way we came. This was the actual detachment of cavalry forward from this area to scatter the American skirmishers that were way up through there. And so the, the British Legion of the Dragoons, they were green uniformed. Um, they were awaiting that order to advance from here. And of course, as you know, all the way across through here is where they were. And I was like I was saying earlier, when I was here seven years ago, this has grown up very bad. It used to be just grass, but this was the British line right here. This was the British line of battle. And as you can see, once again, on the battlefield, you are here. There we are. I think we may have had an artillery piece. Artillery didn't play hardly any role in this battle. There were some of the three pounders, but um, over here on your left, these are wetlands, lowlands, and kind of swampy, so they could not flank, and so Tarleton probably moved too quick to get his men in order and deployed. So that was a mistake, tactical mistake, from this area right here. Oh yeah, at this location right here, guys, after firing his order, now those American skirmishers that we showed you at the beginning, they kind of melted back into that second line of defense. When the British troops saw that, they started moving forward, how? At the quick step. At the quick step with bayonets lowered. That's right. And as they advanced, 
they would actually shout to try to uh, do that. And here's what we're looking at here on the actual battlefield from this area. And they wanted to flank from here over there, straight over there, but also over there to come that way. Guess what? Didn't work. Okay, guys, here's something that's actually kind of cool. The Grasshopper is a three pound cannon, very light maneuverable. And there's a silhouette of one. We saw one back at the visitor center um, inside the little museum, but there was a race for it. And this is a true story. At the end of the battle, the Americans swept forward. Officers sought to capture their three pounders. Captain Anderson of Maryland won the race when he used his spontoon to vault forward onto one of them. Captain Kirkwood of Delaware captured the other. And there's kind of an idealized thing but they captured them right here on the spot. And the Americans were just putting a whooping on them by then. Remember, this battle didn't even last an hour. So now we're gonna move right up here. We're, by the way, we are on the uh, left flank looking that way. So from a British position. Right okay, here. guys, right here on this spot, as you remember, now I'm looking back. Remember, that was where we started from right over there. There was a misunderstood order which caused the double envelopment and the, or the pincher movement. And that was right here. You guys can read that. Ordered his right flank to turn, his center and left flank misunderstood, and they begin retreating. The British broke ranks, surged forward. Morgan saw this, ordered the Continentals to face about and fire at close range. The British 7th were raw recruits. They panicked, they fell back. The Highlanders were still coming, got repulsed, and that was the stage set for annihilation and the American victory. And this is where it began, right here. This is the British left flank. Right up there is where we're walking next. And there is where the legendary double envelopment happened. Let's go. Okay, everybody. You've heard of a pincher's movement or a double envelopment. You guys that know your military tactics. How about old Josh Hollips? He should be here with us, shouldn't he? Mm -hmm. Sit down. Josh is out fly fishing right now, but here's the location of it. Let's read this off to you. Go right ahead. There you go. On this field, the Continentals blunted the British advance, then charged with bayonets flashing. Cavalry hit the left and right of the 71st. God the bless them, right? Yeah. That's 71st the, again. The militia reformed and surged against the right and left. British troops found themselves overwhelmed and surrounded. Morgan had executed a double envelopment. In less than an hour, the crucial battle of Calpins had been decided. The classic use of the military tactic of a double envelopment took place at the Battle of Cannae. It's Cannae, yeah. In southern Italy yeah. in 2016 BC, there soldiers under the command of Hannibal surrounded and crushed a much larger, superior Roman army. So let's put this in layman's terms. Yes, layman's terms. We had them right where we wanted them. We had them in a damn stranglehold. Thank you, Mr. Ted Nugent, for those lyrics. That's exactly right. And it happened right out here in front of you. It, I mean, it was all over by then. Once an army is surrounded like that or gets in a pincher's movement, there's nothing they can do. And um, on this flat ground, as you guys can see, and of course, like I've said, none of this was here back then. This was mostly open ground and grass. And there was some cane break way off on the flanks. So it funneled the British right in through here. So you had them easy. And there you go, people, the Battle of Cowpens. And less than an hour was over. And that pretty much stopped the war in the Deep South. After that, everybody moved out of here and went up to Virginia, started making their way there. They fought one more, you know, the Battle of Guilford Courthouse. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was up near uh, Greensboro. And then after that, Cornwallis went all the way up to Virginia. Cool cats, we have come to the Washington Light Infantry Monument. Now look how pretty this is, you guys. This is really, really pretty. And this was the original marker to commemorate the final stages of the Battle of Cowpens right here because it's an important American victory. But it, was, it has been completely redone. Look at the original monument in 1856, how badly that had deteriorated. There's a picture of it. And now that's what it looks like. So it really, really is nice. Good job, guys. Here is the last marker on the battlefield. We'll show you what we were talking about. The army moved North Carolina where General Nathaniel Green did dismiss the militia. And they went to the Dan River before the British could overtake and recapture their prisoners. But this is kind of a look at it here. Guilford Courthouse. And then eventually they do go up to Yorktown and Petersburg. And then where we live in Georgia, there was a skirmish at Kettle Creek, if you see that. And I'd like to actually, we need to go there because you've never been. Mm -mm. I've been there twice. It's small. Yeah, it's very small. It's all militia. Um, and there's the end of the Cowpens National Battlefield, guys. Let's take one last look at it where the Revolutionary War in America was won in the South. Hope everyone enjoyed the video. Make sure you like and subscribe. 
Check out the other one that we did at Kings Mountain. Absolutely wonderful. What a wonderful time here. You guys, please come and visit. Take care of your national parks, especially these battlefields. See you guys next time right here. Woo! Thank you, Daniel Morgan.